a forest. Imagine standing beneath a dense canopy of trees, sunlight filtering through the leaves, and the sound of rustling branches filling the air. On the surface, this seems like an ordinary scene of nature, but underneath your feet, hidden from view, is a world more intricate and vital than you could ever imagine. Beneath the soil, deep within the root systems of towering oaks, pines, and birches, exists a vast interconnected web of life, fungi. This hidden network, often overlooked, is the true engine that drives the forest's survival. Without fungi, the very essence of the forest would unravel. Today, we're peeling back the layers of the forest floor to reveal the mysterious and misunderstood life of fungi, whose influence stretches from the smallest decomposing leaf to the tallest tree. Fungi are not plants, animals, or bacteria. They belong to their own kingdom, one of the five major groups of life on Earth, and their importance cannot be overstated. Despite their modest and sometimes slimy appearance, fungi are essential to the health and balance of nearly all ecosystems on the planet, particularly forests. Scientists estimate that there may be more than 5 million species of fungi globally, but only a fraction, perhaps 150,000, have been scientifically described. This leaves 98% of fungal species a mystery waiting to be discovered. So why should we care about these obscure organisms? Because without fungi, forests would not exist in the way we know them. Fungi are ecological engineers, silently working to break down organic material, recycle nutrients, and maintain the delicate balance that allows life to thrive. Fungi's role in forest ecosystems is not just important, it's irreplaceable. They break down dead organic matter, like fallen leaves, dead trees, and even animal remains, releasing valuable nutrients back into the soil. Without fungi, the forest would be buried under its own waste, suffocating under unprocessed litter. But the work of fungi doesn't stop there. They also form symbiotic relationships with plants, control populations of other organisms, and are central to the forest's overall health. Yet what you see above the ground, those colorful mushrooms that pop up during the fall, is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's venture beneath the surface where fungi truly come to life. Mushrooms, those colorful, sometimes oddly shaped fruiting bodies we see on the forest floor, are only a tiny part of the fungal organism. In fact, these mushrooms are akin to the fruit of a tree, while the majority of the fungal body remains hidden underground in the form of mycelium. Mycelium is a vast network of thread-like structures, call it hyphae, that weave through the soil and organic matter. This underground network can stretch for kilometers in every direction, linking trees, plants, and other organisms in a sophisticated symbiotic system. In some forests, a single fungal network may cover hundreds of acres and exist for thousands of years, making it one of the oldest and largest living things on Earth. The mycelial network acts like a massive underground internet for trees and plants. Through this network, nutrients and water are exchanged between organisms. Trees can communicate with one another, sending distress signals when under attack by pests or diseases, and sharing resources with younger saplings that need help to survive. But how does this work? It all comes down to one of fungi's most incredible contributions to forest life, the formation of mycorrhizae. When you think of trees, you likely imagine them as solitary giants, each standing on its own, competing for sunlight and space. But in reality, forests operate much more like a community, and fungi are at the center of this cooperation. One of the most critical partnerships in nature is the symbiotic relationship between fungi and plant roots, known as mycorrhiza. In this relationship, fungi wrap around the roots of trees and plants, increasing their ability to absorb water and nutrients, like phosphorus and nitrogen from the soil. In exchange, the fungi receive carbohydrates and sugars from the plant, which the plant produces through photosynthesis. This mutualistic relationship is essential for the survival of nearly all terrestrial plants. In fact, 95% of plant species rely on mycorrhizal fungi to thrive. Without fungi, many plants, particularly large trees, would struggle to grow in nutrient-poor soils. And by helping plants absorb more carbon, Mycorrhizal fungi play a vital role in reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. 
making them key players in the fight against climate change. There are different types of mycorrhiza, depending on the species of plant involved. In temperate forests, trees like pines, oaks, and beeches typically form ectomycorrhizae, where the fungal hyphae form a protective sheath around the root tips, significantly increasing the tree's ability to absorb nutrients. But the most fascinating aspect of this symbiotic relationship is the way fungi link trees together into an interconnected network, often referred to as the wood wide web. Through this network, older, well-established trees can transfer nutrients to younger trees, helping them grow in the dense shade. In times of stress, such as drought or disease, trees can even lend nutrients to one another through the fungal network. It's a complex and finely tuned system of cooperation that allows the entire forest to thrive. Fungi play an equally important role in forests as decomposers, breaking down dead organic matter and returning nutrients to the soil. Without fungi, forests would be littered with fallen trees, leaves and animal carcasses with no way to break them down. Over time, this buildup of organic matter would choke the life out of the forest, preventing new plants from growing. Saprotrophic fungi, those that feed on dead and decaying matter, are the workhorses of the forest ecosystem. They break down tough materials like lignin and cellulose, which make up the cell walls of plants. Lignin, in particular, is one of the most difficult substances to break down in nature, and fungi are one of the few organisms capable of doing so. By breaking down dead wood and plant material, fungi release essential nutrients like carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus back into the soil where they can be used by living plants. This process can take years or even decades, depending on the size and type of material being broken down. For example, bracket fungi, which grow on the sides of trees and look like shelves or hooves, are slowly turning the dead wood they inhabit into soft, nutrient-rich soil. As they digest the wood, they also create new habitats for insects, birds and small mammals, further enriching the forest ecosystem. Yet fungi's role as recyclers goes beyond just the forest floor. Some species have the ability to break down pollutants and even plastics, offering hope for solving some of our most pressing environmental challenges. We live in a world increasingly polluted by industrial waste, plastics and harmful chemicals. But fungi may offer a surprising solution to this global crisis through a process called mycoremediation, the use of fungi to clean up contaminated environments. Certain fungi have the ability to break down harmful substances like oil, pesticides and even radioactive materials. For example, the oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus, is known for its ability to break down hydrocarbons, the building blocks of oil. In places where oil spills have contaminated the soil, these fungi can be introduced to clean up the mess naturally, without the need for harsh chemicals. Even more astonishing is the discovery of fungi that can decompose plastics. One species, Pestilotiopsis microspora, found in the Amazon rainforest, has the remarkable ability to break down polyurethane, a common plastic used in everything from furniture to car parts. As the world grapples with the growing problem of plastic pollution, fungi may hold the key to a natural, sustainable solution. While many fungi benefit the forest through decomposition and symbiosis, not all fungi are friendly. Some are pathogens, organisms that live off and harm other living things. In natural ecosystems, pathogenic fungi play an important role by keeping plant and animal populations in check. They prevent any one species from dominating the ecosystem, ensuring that biodiversity thrives. But in forests that have been altered by human activity, pathogenic fungi can become devastating forces of destruction. One of the most well-known examples of this is oak dieback, a disease that has ravaged oak populations in Europe and North America since the 1980s. This disease is caused by umi seeds, a group of fungus-like organisms that infect tree roots, gradually killing the trees and altering the entire forest ecosystem. Similarly, ash dieback, caused by the fungus Hymenocyphus fraxineus, has devastated ash trees across Europe, killing young saplings and leaving older trees vulnerable to secondary infections. And let's not forget Dutch elm disease, caused by the Ophiostoma fungus, 
which has nearly wiped out elm populations in many parts of the world. These examples illustrate how easily the balance in forest ecosystems can be tipped when a single organism, whether native or introduced, becomes too dominant. The benefits of fungi extend far beyond the forest. For centuries, humans have harnessed the power of fungi in ways that impact nearly every aspect of our lives, from the food we eat to the medicines we rely on to survive. One of the most well-known and widespread uses of fungi is in food production. Every day, billions of people consume products that owe their existence to fungi. Yeasts, a type of fungus, are essential for making bread rise, fermenting beer, and producing wine. Without yeast, these staples of human culture would not exist. And it doesn't stop there. Fungi like Aspergillus and Penicillium are used to produce some of the world's most beloved foods, including cheese and soy sauce. Penicillium roqueforti gives blue cheese its distinctive flavor and texture, while Aspergillus oryzae is essential in the fermentation process that creates soy sauce, miso, and sake. These fungi are silent culinary partners, transforming simple ingredients into complex and culturally significant foods. But fungi's influence on food isn't limited to fermentation. In many cultures, wild mushrooms are a prized delicacy. From the forests of Eastern Europe to the woodlands of North America, mushroom foraging is a time-honored tradition. Species like chanterelles, bolets, and morels are sought after for their unique flavors and textures. In places like Poland, mushroom picking is not just a seasonal activity, it's a cultural institution that dates back centuries. This tradition is so ingrained in the culture that it even appears in classic literature, such as in the epic poem Pan Tadeusz by Adam Mickiewicz. However, mushroom foraging is not without its risks. Every year, cases of mushroom poisoning occur when foragers mistake deadly fungi, like the death cap, Amanita phalloides, for edible species. The death cap is one of the world's most poisonous mushrooms, and consuming just a small portion can be fatal. It closely resembles edible varieties such as the parasol mushroom, leading to tragic accidents. This serves as a sobering reminder of the dual nature of fungi. They can sustain life, but they can also take it away. Perhaps the most life-changing contribution fungi have made to humanity is in the field of medicine. One of the most important medical discoveries in history, penicillin, comes from a fungus. In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered that a mold called Penicillium notatum produced a substance that could kill bacteria. This discovery led to the development of penicillin, the world's first antibiotic, which has since saved millions of lives by treating bacterial infections that were once deadly. But the medical miracles of fungi don't end there. Statins, which are cholesterol-lowering drugs taken by millions of people worldwide, are also derived from fungi. The first statin, lovastatin, was isolated from the fungus Aspergillus tereus in the late 1970s, and it revolutionized the treatment of heart disease. Today, statins are a cornerstone of cardiovascular health, preventing heart attacks and strokes by reducing harmful cholesterol levels. Fungi have also provided immunosuppressants used in organ transplants, such as cyclosporin, which is derived from the soil fungus Tolipocladium inflatum. This drug suppresses the immune system's natural response to reject transplanted organs, allowing countless patients to live longer and healthier lives after receiving kidney, liver, or heart transplants. As scientists continue to explore the fungal kingdom, new medicines are being discovered all the time. For example, cordyceps, a genus of parasitic fungi, is being studied for its potential anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory properties, while psilocybin, the active compound in certain hallucinogenic mushrooms, is showing promise in treating conditions like depression, PTSD, and addiction. The potential for fungi to revolutionize modern medicine is still being uncovered, and the future looks bright. As vital as fungi are to human culture and health, they also serve a critical role in monitoring the health of the environment. Fungi are incredibly sensitive to changes in their surroundings, making them excellent bioindicators, organisms that help scientists assess the health of an ecosystem. Certain fungi thrive only in pristine environments, 
while others may appear or disappear in response to pollution, habitat destruction, or climate change. By studying the presence or absence of specific fungal species, researchers can gauge the overall condition of an ecosystem. This makes fungi invaluable for tracking the effects of deforestation, air pollution, and global warming on forests. For instance, lichen, which is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae, is particularly sensitive to air quality. In areas with high pollution levels, especially sulfur dioxide, lichen species may disappear altogether. By monitoring lichen populations, scientists can track changes in air quality over time. Fungi can also signal the health of forest soils. Mycorrhizal fungi are especially important bioindicators because they are sensitive to disturbances like logging, agriculture, or industrial activities. A decline in the diversity or abundance of mycorrhizal fungi in a forest can indicate that the soil is being degraded, which in turn affects plant growth and the overall health of the ecosystem. Despite their critical importance, fungi often go unrecognized in conservation efforts. Yet, as we face a global biodiversity crisis, protecting fungi is just as important as protecting plants and animals. Old-growth forests, like the Białowieża primeval forest in Poland, are home to countless rare and endangered fungal species that have evolved alongside the forest for thousands of years. These fungi play a vital role in the ecosystem, breaking down deadwood, forming symbiotic relationships with trees, and sustaining the biodiversity of the forest. However, deforestation, habitat destruction, and climate change are putting fungal species at risk. The destruction of forest habitats leads to the loss of fungal diversity, which can have cascading effects on the entire ecosystem. When a forest is logged or cleared for agriculture, the fungi that depend on that forest are often lost forever. And with them, the ecosystem services they provide, such as nutrient cycling, soil formation, and carbon sequestration, are also lost. The conservation of fungal biodiversity is becoming increasingly urgent. Unfortunately, fungi are often overlooked in conservation policies and efforts, even though they play a central role in maintaining the health of ecosystems. While animals and plants receive the bulk of attention in conservation programs, fungi remain in the shadows, even though they are the foundation upon which many ecosystems are built. Climate change is one of the most significant threats to global biodiversity, and fungi are no exception. As temperatures rise and weather patterns become more unpredictable, fungal communities are being dramatically affected. Fungal species that once thrived in cool, moist environments are finding it harder to survive in a warmer, drier world. In some cases, this has led to shifts in the distribution of fungal species, with invasive fungi moving into new areas as the climate changes. For example, Clathrus archeri, commonly known as the octopus stinkhorn, is a fungus native to Australia and New Zealand. But in recent years, it has spread across Europe, including into Poland, where it now thrives in forests. Similarly, the heather bolet, Oreoboletus projectellus, a mushroom native to North America, has become a common sight in Polish coastal pine forests. These species are displacing native fungi, potentially disrupting the delicate balance of local ecosystems. However, fungi also have the potential to help combat climate change. Mycorrhizal fungi, as we've seen, play a crucial role in carbon sequestration by helping forests absorb and store carbon dioxide. By supporting the growth of trees and plants, these fungi are essential allies in the fight to slow down global warming. On the flip side, fungi themselves are at risk from the changes brought on by global warming. Some fungal species that rely on specific temperature and moisture conditions may face extinction as their habitats become unsuitable. In a 2018 study, scientists found that climate change could lead to the extinction of 10% of all fungal species by 2070, a staggering loss that would have profound implications for the ecosystems that depend on them. While fungi face significant challenges in the wild, they are also at the forefront of biotechnological innovation. As scientists learn more about the unique properties of fungi, they are finding ways to use them to solve some of the world's most pressing problems, from environmental degradation to sustainable materials. 
One of the most exciting developments in fungal biotechnology is the use of mycelium to create eco-friendly alternatives to traditional materials. Companies are now growing mycelium-based leather, which mimics the texture and durability of animal leather, but is completely biodegradable and cruelty-free. Mycelium is also being used to develop biodegradable packaging that can replace plastic, reducing waste and pollution. Fungi are even being used to create biofuels. By genetically engineering certain species of fungi, scientists are exploring ways to produce fuels from plant waste, offering a renewable and sustainable energy source that could reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. The possibilities are endless. With advances in synthetic biology, fungi could soon be used to create new medicines, bio-based chemicals, even entirely new materials with properties we haven't yet imagined. The fungal kingdom is a treasure trove of untapped potential, waiting for discovery. From eco-friendly alternatives to plastic, to revolutionary medical treatments, fungi have the power to transform the way we live. But as we continue to explore the future of fungal biotechnology, it's essential to remember that the survival of these organisms and the ecosystems they support is under threat. In the last decade, fungi have become a focal point for biotechnology, where science meets sustainability. One of the most groundbreaking innovations is the development of mycelium-based materials. Mycelium, the intricate network of fungal threads that form the fungal body, can be cultivated into almost any shape and grown into sturdy, durable materials. The result? Fungi-derived materials that can replace leather, plastic, and even building materials. Mycelium leather, developed by companies like Myco Works, is already gaining traction in the fashion industry as a sustainable alternative to traditional leather. Unlike animal leather, which requires large amounts of water, chemicals, and land to produce, mycelium leather is cruelty-free and biodegradable. It is grown in labs, shaped into the desired form, and, once fully developed, can be used to craft anything from jackets to shoes, without any harm to the environment. But that's just the beginning. Mycelium packaging is another area of innovation. Imagine a world where the packaging used to ship your groceries or gadgets is made of fungi and, when discarded, decomposes completely in a matter of weeks, leaving no harmful residue behind. As concerns about plastic pollution continue to grow, mycelium packaging offers a glimpse of a future where our waste is naturally biodegradable. And fungi's contributions don't stop there. Biofuels produced by fungi are becoming a promising alternative to fossil fuels. Some fungi can convert plant waste, like corn stalks and wood chips, into biofuels that could power vehicles, airplanes, and entire cities. This shift could significantly reduce carbon emissions, helping to mitigate the effects of climate change. But the most revolutionary development may come from synthetic biology. Scientists are now working to genetically engineer fungi to produce new kinds of bio-based chemicals, medicines, and even energy sources. The flexibility of fungal biology makes them ideal candidates for biofactories capable of producing everything from antibiotics to synthetic fibers. In fact, there's even research exploring whether mycelium structures could one day be used to grow buildings, or at least components of them. The strength and flexibility of mycelium make it an ideal candidate for creating sustainable building materials. One day, entire houses might be built, or at least insulated, using fungi, making homes more environmentally friendly and reducing reliance on non-renewable resources. As exciting as these innovations are, they raise an important question. Are we underestimating the intelligence and complexity of fungi? As we learn more about fungi's incredible abilities, some researchers are beginning to ask whether these organisms exhibit signs of sentience or awareness. It may seem far-fetched to think of fungi as conscious beings, but their behavior, particularly within the complex mycelial networks, suggests that they may be capable of more than just mindless growth. Recent studies have shown that fungi can communicate with plants and other fungi through their mycelial networks, exchanging nutrients and sending warning signals when under threat from pests or diseases. This complex system of cooperation and resource allocation has led some scientists to wonder whether fungi possess a form of distributed intelligence, 
a decentralized brain-like system that allows them to respond to their environment in sophisticated ways. For instance, fungi can make complex decisions about resource distribution, moving nutrients to areas where they are most needed. They can even reroute resources away from dying plants to healthier ones, ensuring the survival of the larger ecosystem. Some mycologists argue that these actions suggest a type of intelligence, albeit one very different from our own. In fact, fungi's ability to solve problems and adapt to their surroundings has sparked philosophical debates about the nature of consciousness. Could fungi be aware of their environment? Do they experience something akin to sensations or even emotions? These questions may sound like the realm of science fiction, but as we continue to uncover the mysteries of the fungal kingdom, they're becoming more relevant. Philosophers and biologists alike are now grappling with the idea that fungi, and perhaps other simple organisms, may possess some form of awareness or sensitivity to their environment. This challenges our traditional views on consciousness and sentience, which have historically been limited to animals with nervous systems. If fungi are capable of processing information and making decisions, should we reconsider how we classify intelligence in the natural world? As we marvel at the complexity and ingenuity of fungi, it's important to remember that these organisms face significant threats, primarily from climate change and human activity. While fungi have survived on Earth for over one billion years, adapting to countless environmental changes, the rapid pace of modern global warming presents a unique challenge. Climate change is already affecting the distribution of fungi. Warmer temperatures and changing precipitation patterns are causing shifts in fungal communities. Species that once thrived in cooler, wetter environments are struggling to survive in the face of rising temperatures. In many regions, the delicate balance between decomposers, pathogens, and mycorrhizal fungi is being disrupted, with potentially devastating consequences for forest ecosystems. For example, in North America and Europe, the introduction of invasive fungal species has dramatically altered the balance of native fungal communities. The heather bolet, Aureobolatus projectellus, a species native to North America, has spread into European forests, where it has displaced native fungi. Similarly, the octopus stinkhorn, Clathrus archeri, a bizarre-looking fungus originally from Australia, has now made its home in European forests, further illustrating how globalization and climate change are reshaping fungal biodiversity. But perhaps the greatest threat to fungi comes from the destruction of forests. As old-growth forests are cleared for agriculture, development and timber, the fungal species that depend on these ecosystems are disappearing. When a forest is lost, so too is the intricate web of fungi that has evolved over millennia to support it. Without these fungi, forests lose their ability to regenerate, carbon sequestration declines, and biodiversity collapses. This destruction has far-reaching consequences. For example, mycorrhizal fungi play a key role in carbon sequestration, helping forests absorb and store carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. By clearing forests and disrupting fungal networks, we are not only losing biodiversity, but also accelerating the pace of climate change. Scientists warn that if current trends continue, we could lose 10% of all fungal species by the year 2070. This would be a catastrophic loss, not just for fungi, but for the ecosystems that depend on them. Given the essential role that fungi play in maintaining the health of ecosystems, conserving fungal biodiversity is more important than ever. However, fungi are often overlooked in conservation efforts, which tend to focus on plants and animals. This needs to change. Protecting fungi is essential for protecting forests, and by extension, the entire planet. Old-growth forests like the Białowieża forest in Poland offer a model for how fungal conservation can be achieved. This ancient forest, home to an astonishing diversity of fungal species, is a living laboratory where scientists can study the interactions between fungi, plants, and animals. Protecting forests like Białowieża not only preserves these ecosystems, but also ensures that the fungal species they contain are safeguarded for future generations. Beyond forest conservation, efforts are underway to raise awareness about the importance of fungi in biodiversity. 
Mycologists and conservationists are calling for more research into fungal species, better monitoring of fungal populations, and the inclusion of fungi in conservation policies. One promising area is the use of fungi as indicator species for environmental health. By studying changes in fungal populations, scientists can monitor the health of entire ecosystems. Fungi are sensitive to pollutants, habitat degradation, and climate change, making them excellent sentinels for detecting early signs of environmental stress. AS we stand on the cusp of a new era in fungal research. One thing is clear, fungi are far more than simple decomposers. They are architects of ecosystems, partners in symbiosis, bioengineers, and perhaps even intelligent problem solvers. Their potential to revolutionize fields as diverse as medicine, agriculture, biotechnology, and environmental conservation is only beginning to be realized. But with this potential comes responsibility. As we explore the possibilities of fungi in our own technological advancements, we must also take steps to protect the natural environments where these remarkable organisms thrive. By conserving forests, reducing carbon emissions, and promoting sustainable land management practices, we can help ensure that the fungal kingdom continues to flourish and that humanity continues to benefit from its untold wisdom and resources.